I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bibles, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 16. We're going to begin looking at verse 13 today. We've been looking at the complaining of the people. We have seen how that God has sent manna to them. And now we want to look today at how manna is a picture of the written word of God, the Bible, and it is also a picture of the living word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Exodus chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man, according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tanks. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more and some less. And when they did eat it, meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning, notwithstanding, if they hearken not unto Moses, but notwithstanding they hearken not unto Moses, but some of them left it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. As we think about this manna being a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, let's just read also in John chapter 6, beginning in verse 31. It says, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So as we are looking at these verses, we see here how that this manna is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, first of all, back in Exodus chapter 16, and in verse 13, it talks about the quail. It says, And it came to pass that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. As we look at these quails, it's important for us to remember that the manna is a type of Christ. The quail is not a type of Christ, but rather um it is, a, it is a picture of flesh to satisfy their fleshly desires. Reminds me of, I believe it's Psalm 106 and verse 15, but I may be wrong on that, where it speaks of the children of Israel and them asking God, and God says, and he gave them their request, but sent leanness to their soul. And friends, we need to be very careful what we ask for as a people of God, because sometimes what we ask for is not what we need at all. As a matter of fact, Sometimes the things that we ask for would actually be to our detriment if God gave them to us. And friends, if we're asking for something that would ultimately bring leanness to our soul, should God give it to us, then we are not praying for the right things. And here this quail is a picture of, of flesh that God gave them in order to uh, satisfy their fleshly desires. And as a people of God, it's not the fleshly desires that we need taken care of. It's the spiritual desires in our life. May we long for the things that God desires to give us. We see that this manga was a supernatural gift. It was not something that they worked for. It was not something that Moses gave them. It was something that God gave them. Way back in verse 4 of Exodus 16, it says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Notice this, that I may prove them whether they walk in my law or no. So we see as we look back at Exodus 16 and verse 4, 
that not only did this manna come to them from God, but God says, through all of this, I'm going to give them instruction what they are to do, what they're not going to do. And he says, I'm going to use this to prove them whether or not they will keep my law. And friends, we must understand that there are times in our life that God does prove us. He will send things our way to prove us, to, to prove our faith, to, to prove how dedicated we are to him and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, we read from John chapter 6, and I believe it's in that exact same chapter uh, that you will find there near the first of the chapter, I believe it is, that the Bible says that Jesus did these things to prove them. And there is a proving time in the life of the people of God to, to show where we are in our fellowship with God and in our trust of him. So God says, I'm going to use this to prove them whether they will walk in my laws or no. Verse 14 also showed us that this was that this manna was sent to them by God. It says, And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. So literally, God sent this manna to them. And manna means, what is it? And as they looked at it, they were confused about it. And they wondered what in the world it was and where it came from. But the Bible is very clear that this manna came down from heaven. Um, that God had sent it to them from heaven. Notice what it says in verse 4. It says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rain every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. So this came to them from heaven. Uh, and as a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, it came from heaven down into the wilderness of sin. And praise God that the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to leave the glory and the splendor of heaven, that he was willing to leave the right hand of the Father, and he was willing to come down into this wilderness of sin in order to save us. He was willing to come into this wilderness of sin in order to bring us redemption, in order to make it possible that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're told in verse 14 that this manna was small in size. This reminds me of the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, what a wonder it is, as Philippians 2 would tell us, that the one who was the very God of all creation would humble himself, become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And it reminds us of the importance of humility in our lives uh, as the children of God. You know, it's, it's absolutely amazing when we stop and think how often we come to that place in our life that we refuse to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And, and friend, we need to be a humble people. Then we see also that this manna was white in verse 15. It says, And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord gave you to eat. We see here the purity of the bread and Friends, that reminds us of the purity of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we stop and think of who he is, friends, it's, it's a wonder, it's a blessing that, that God loved us so much that the Lord Jesus Christ, who was completely pure, the Bible makes it very clear that the Lord Jesus Christ did no sin. The Bible says that in him was no sin, and it tells us that he knew no sin, but that he was willing to become sin for us. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And friend, I want to encourage you today. Uh, if you, As you listen to this, I want to encourage you today. If you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, friend, it's not too hard for us to understand that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that we have all said things, thought things, and did things that were contrary to the nature of God, that grieved the heart of a holy God, and those that sin, the fact that we were born sinners and that we also practice sin, that sin has separated us from a holy God, but and the only one that can provide salvation for us is the sinless, spotless Lamb of God who died in our place upon the cross of Calvary. 
Calvary. And friend, I ask you today as we conclude this devotional study, has there been a time and has there been a place in your life that you've repented of your sin, that you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone for your soul salvation? Friends, if not, I encourage you, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Do not delay. Turn to the Lord today while you have the opportunity and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Have a great day.